Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece of tool of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology, and instructional coach for my district. And I'm her producer and husband, Fuzz Martin, and I make sure I check all the boxes before you hear each and every episode. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And I know like most people listen to this show, not necessarily on the day it launches, but this is launching on Halloween in 2022. So there we go. Yeah. So it's a Monday. That's when we publish, you know? Yeah. And here we are ready to slide on into Thanksgiving. Yeah. We're like moving. Let's move on. Pumpkin out of one holiday and pumpkin into the next. Turn that pumpkin into a cornucopia (laughs) and Mm. go from there. Maybe. Or whatever we're going to do. I know turkeys. Um, uh, lots of, lots of leaves. Yeah. Corn. Usually I do like the, I go from Halloween pumpkins to like, you know, the artsy November pumpkins. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. We go from like the orange in your face to like white and, and like, neutral beige. Pumpkins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> More of the earth tony pumpkins. Well, I suppose orange is earth tony. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm colorblind. So today, uh, <laughs> We are talking about a site called Checkology. Checkology. Yeah. So this site's pretty cool. It was brought to my attention by our U.S. government teacher in my high school who uses it. She's like, hey, I've used this site before. I don't know how to use it, but I'm going to try it. Tell me what you think. So then I was like, <laughs> oh, I should play around with it. And then we can let talk me, about it together. Let me check on that for you. <laughs> oh, <little> funsies. <laughs> So um, she and I then discussed, like, she's like, how can I use this in my classroom? And what do you think? And so we kind of started digging in to Checkology, which is awesome. So Checkology is a, it's a website created for the, by the News Literacy Project. And the whole goal is to be creating informed citizens and teaching our students how to understand, like, media bias and how to look at um, different ways, like, misinformation and mm-hmm. just, like, how to understand all of these things. because. I mean, news stories are coming out all the time. You want to use current events in your classroom. You want to use things, and but you also have to teach kids how to understand the news that's coming out. I know a lot of our kids get news from TikTok and all kinds of stuff. So, like, how do you find real news versus created news that you may or may see more bias in? So, Checkology has been created to show students and teach them how to do all of that. And what I appreciate about this, it's free. For mm-hmm. educators, it's free for students. You create a little sign in, like you sign up with your your email, and then it has all kinds of content. So you can choose what you need to use it for in your classroom. You can use it for single lessons. You can use it for units. Um, it talks about, and she uses it in her U.S. government class in high school. I say middle school, high school. You you choose. So when you sign in. You just say like I teach middle school students. Like it's very, it's going to give you information that's appropriate for your grade level right, that yeah, you sure, teach. Sure. And so once you sign in, you have access to all of these pre-created lessons, which is awesome. Um, they have like from if you're teaching journalism classes, like we have a news class, you can like our students student create a newspaper. Like so, talk, talking about journalism, it's talking about like freedom of the press. It talks about. Um, what I appreciate and I use the most, and now that I have this, I'm going to use this resource, is arguments and evidence. So I teach a lot of how to write an argument or find an argument and then have evidence to back up your argument. And they have a whole unit lesson based around arguments and evidence. And what's cool about this is you can assign this to your students and have them walk through the lesson, or you can teach it in pieces as a teacher in front of your class. So you crank out the lesson, you can put it, they've got these cool videos they have actual like real life journalism journalists i should Mm -hmm. say teaching the lessons like this is where we would see it this is what happens and then they have pre-created news stories so they can teach from like not real stories i guess like they're based on real events but they're not gonna be real stories so that way they can use them as teaching tools when they're teaching students it doesn't lead anybody to think one way or another correct a certain Piece. Yeah. And then what's cool about it is like they'll throw like in one of these lessons, you're looking at arguments and evidence. Then they will in the lesson as you're going through, there's a bunch of different parts. So it's like the argument lesson. There's like 28 different parts to it. So there are talking points. There are videos. 
Then there are tweets. So they will have fake tweets created. Mm -hmm. And then you have to decide, like, is this logical? Is like identify the logical fallacy present in this post. So then you look at the social media posts with your students or if your students look at it and they have to identify what would be real in this, what wouldn't be real in this. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives them like a real way, like an authentic way to look at how media is used and how parts can be true and parts can be totally false. And it's hard to tell what from what. Mm -hmm. And so it teaches our students to like be aware of that and just understand like some of this is going to be biased. Some of this isn't anyway. So this whole website, Checkology is based around students being able to identify misinformation and then also being able to teach them like not only where you can find it, but also like when you're writing, making yeah. sure that what you're writing is appropriate and all kinds of things. Um, they also have um, like evaluating science-based claims. So you can go in and look at different science things and what's real, what's not. So they have all these lessons under, like as a teacher, you can assign them in your dashboard. Mm -hmm. So when you're going across, there's like a billion different choices. So you got your dashboard. Then they have content. So as you're kind of going through a dashboard, you can just pull lesson content to see what you want to teach in your classroom. Then they have the check center, which I think is awesome. They have a toolbox or a quick check. And if you click on the quick check, it will say text claim, image claim, video only. And you literally upload the text that you find or the image that you find. And then it will help you identify mm -hmm. if it's false claims, if it's real claims, like where this is coming from, that kind of stuff. And then also has like a toolbox. So you can use these like tips with your students. Like how do you find school, like skills of walking through, like looking at geolocation and different mm -hmm. types of things to identify if stuff is real or not which is cool. Yeah, that's very cool. They also have a section on journalists. So you can choose like an actual journalist from the wall street journal. And then what are their areas of expertise? And then you can look at their actual work within. Like, so if you have some, if you have a journalism class you're teaching or a newspaper class, you can actually look at like learn about actual journalists real life, which mm -hmm. is cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also have a resource section for teachers, which, you know, I love a good resource section. Um, they have different transcripts. They have lesson posters, which you can put in your room if you're talking about different biases and different types of media and things like that. And they have the answer keys, to all the stuff you need. And they have parent guardian letters. You can let parents know what kids are learning in your classroom. And different types of like tips and tricks, like when you're teaching this stuff, like how to roll it out to your students, all kind of thing. So, this Checkology site has resources just like for teachers to be teaching. It has resources to assist your students if they're doing things on their own. I'll be using it with my students in several different ways, but I think also having that toolbox where they can click on like, let me check to see if this is real or where this came from. Right. I think is a cool tool for anybody to have when you're checking if a source is real. I can't tell you how many times kids will come into my classroom and be like, I have this great Abraham Lincoln quote. <laughs> Cause I know I like Abraham Lincoln. Right. And then they pull out the quote and I'm like, <laughs> okay, kids, let's do some evaluation on this quote. Is it real? It's like, yeah, I found it online. It says Abraham Lincoln right here. Yeah. That too. It's got his picture next to it. I'm like, cool. All right. No, he did not say that at all. <laughs> like, but it sounds so cool. I'm like, it's a cool quote, does, but no, Abraham Lincoln did not say that. So teaching our kids, like, just because it's online and it looks like it's by somebody, you know, important, maybe they didn't actually say it. So just giving them those resources as well. But yeah, it's a really cool site. So according to their uh, mission statement page, now, again, this is a totally nonpartisan organization, so they don't, uh, they're not looking at one party or another. Mm -hmm. um, also, they said 26% uh, of adults surveyed, only 26% could correctly classify five factual statements presented to them. 35% of U.S. adults surveyed could correctly classify all five opinion statements that were, were presented to them. And 96% of high school students in the U.S. Uh, surveyed failed to challenge the credibility of an unreliable source. So that's why this is important. So uh, this is helping. You know, they're they're 
quote is, education moves slowly, technology doesn't. If we don't act with urgency, our students' ability to engage in civic life will be the casualty. And that's why they've developed this program mm-hmm. to help them teach. And I can tell you, because we do a ton of resor- like research, since I do a lot of inquiry in my classroom, and trying to get students to find authentic research when they're going right. online. We talk about like .org and .edu, but they're down the wormhole of like, oh, I found this blog that talks about this person. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's great. But if they're not a credible source, right. we can't use you can it. Write whatever you want on the internet. Right. And I tell them too, because they design websites in my class. I'm like, you designed a website. Do you want people pulling your research for something? Right. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> really? I don't know about that. Right. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's an important skill. And it's, it, I, I appreciate that it's all, like nicely laid out for educators to pull bits and pieces that would be appropriate for your classroom and appropriate for lessons that your students um, are having. I also want to highlight too in the checkology when you're like the dashboard and you click on more, they have a word wall. I love a good word wall. Um, Mm -hmm. And when you click on it, it gives like real, like it's all the words that you talk about. So they talk about fabricated content. Okay. Well, what does that mean? What is like, you click on it and it will tell you it's misinformation that's entirely made up and designed to deceive you into thinking that it's real. So it's got six pages of all of the vocabulary used and then you click on it and you actually have the definition right in front of you, which I think would be a very helpful tool for students to have as well, especially because some of the things discussed are probably things that they're unfamiliar with. So I thought that was a good resource as well. Yeah. If you click on the for everyone page, they have things like the rumor guard, which are pretty fun. There's like banana eating giant frog isn't so giant or a banana eater. And then it talks about a viral video that was posted on TikTok on October 6th and breaks that down of whether that is real. And they talk about how it was manipulated. The frog in this video is not as large as it appears. The video was created by a videographer who used digital editing to make the frog look bigger. The real frog is only three to 4.5 inches in length. And so it can even help with, you know, I mean, you're watching TikTok and you've got people who can Mm -hmm. break, you know, big videos and things like that. So where'd you find that part at? That is if you click on for everyone from the homepage and then go to rumor guard. Cool. Yeah. So they've got. uh, That'd be great discussions. Just like start of the day, you know, like throw up a picture and see. Right. No, an elephant seal didn't wander the streets after Hurricane Ian. Um, there's yeah, because that was a big thing that was out there. Yeah. So, the, and it's all like very, like if you have a current events mm-hmm. portion in your class or something that you get to, you talk about, this is a great way to to talk about this. And they do get into some of some partisan related stories and break those down. It's kind of like Snopes a bit, except for this, I think, is more credible than Snopes. Yeah. Is. And education based and definitely yeah. meant for being used in the classroom. Yep. So it's, very cool. good content, and I, I think of if anything, a very good conversation starter with your students. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, especially when you have days like if you're setting up different types of arguments and things like that in classroom. Do you remember when Queen Elizabeth died, and they had a, a picture of the McDonald's kiosks, and they all had a picture of Queen Elizabeth on it? No, but uh, okay, I will believe you. Well, that was on, circulating on the internet. It looked like this. Oh. Turn this around and show you. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> no, McDonald's didn't display a tribute to Queen Elizabeth on kiosks. That was an edited photo. There you go. So there you go. It was doctored. I like it. Yeah, me too. Good site. Yeah. Um, Share so it with all your friends. That actually, you can get to that one at rumorguard.org, but it's from the same. Uh, Checkology. Checkology. Yeah, and Checkology is C-H-E-C-K-O-L-O-G-Y dot org. Yep. So there you go. Very Create good. an account. Check, check it, it out. Check it out. Check it oh, out. You knew that was coming, everybody. <laughs> you knew it. Oh, my goodness. Well, thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in this episode, you can visit SmartNWI.com or find me on Facebook. I'm there, too. If you'd like to support the show, please consider buying me a coffee or two. Visit buymeacoffee.com slash smartnwi or visit smartnwi.com and click on that cute little purple coffee cup. Your donations help keep this show going. New episodes almost each week. Thanks for (laughs) listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast and the Smart in WI website 
are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies we've discussed on this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we sure hope they do. And we'll talk to you next time on the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. Thank you.